March the 25th, 2006, Reading Football Club achieved promotion to the top flight of English football for the first time in its history. A week later, the club secured the Coca-Cola Championship. Players and supporters celebrated the greatest season in the club's 135-year history. Steve Goppel's squad had broken records and set new standards as Reading moved stylishly towards the Premiership. This is how the 2005-2006 season unfolded for Reading Football Club, how the Royals became champions. Driving towards a new season. Before friendly matches at Staines and Didcot, the Royals were trying to keep it straight and true at Caversham Heath Golf Club. Two days later, the Royals' major summer signing was unveiled. 20-year-old Leroy Leiter had scored 29 times for Bristol City in the previous season. Now he moved up the M4 after John Medeski shattered the club record paying out £1 million. The chairman had mixed feelings. Well, pretty sick really. <laughs> it's time to celebrate, isn't it? You know, spending all that money. But, you know, sadly that's the way football's going these days. And it is, it is in my, my way of thinking, it's obscene. But there you go. You know, if you're in this pool, you've got to swim around with the rest of them. Lita made his first appearance for the Royals on July the 16th, a sweltering afternoon at Farnborough. He certainly wasn't Reading's only summer signing. The club had strengthened bringing in Doyle, Long, Hunt, Stack, Oster and Makin. Two of the older hands, Graham Murty and Glenn Little, enjoyed the Royals' goal at Farnborough. While most of the squad were on tour in Sweden, Brynjar Gunnarsson also arrived from Watford. Reading's final test before the league kickoff saw Spurs visit the Medeski. Martin Yol had also just made a notable signing. Edgar Davids joined Tottenham from Inter Milan. He took his seat in the director's box. Both teams and spectators stood silently as a mark of respect to Frank Orton. Reading's president had died at the end of June, aged 91. More than 18,000 spectators saw the Premiership club win the match with two first-half goals. Mido slotted home the first. The Royals responded well, but just before the break, Spurs extended their advantage. Enjoying a huge slice of luck, Jermaine Defoe's shot took a wicked deflection to beat Marcus Harneman. Leroy Lita had made his first appearance at the Medeski. Johnny Hayes and Curtis Asano were also introduced in the final stages. Steve Sidwell had a goal disallowed, but the boss had enjoyed the pre-season visit from the Premiership. It was exciting for me to watch him. It was exciting for my players to be competing against them on the same pitch. You know, it's their dream to compete against them week after week in the Premiership. So it was just really good for them. And so the countdown to a new championship season, in glorious conditions at Hogwood Park. Dave Kitson was struggling to make the starting lineup because of a knee injury. There was a relaxed atmosphere in the camp. It's going to be a very, very physical game, different from anything we've done. <laughs> That was classic. <laughs> I want that one saying I'm going to arm him. <laughs> Oi! Nugget! <laughs> 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 
It's a much tougher league this year. Uh, we've had you know, a couple of really good teams come up and three great teams come down and everyone else has strengthened as well. So last year you would have to say was our you know the best chance to go up, but this year it's funny, I mean we have a reputation for beating the best teams in the division. Um, if we can do that this year that we'll probably go up. But um, it's it's a strange one. I hope so, but um, it's, we've got a lot of good teams to beat before we get there. We're very conscious of the deadline we have. Um, you know, in another 48 hours, we'll be right in the thick of preparation for our first match in a season, which means so much, so much to the players who've worked hard in pre-season, so much for all the staff who've similarly put the pound of flesh in. You like to think you're going to get a reward, but. Uh, We've got uh, 46 games and it's a long, hard climb. August the 6th, the opening day brought almost 17,000 spectators and Bobby Williamson's Plymouth to the Medeski. With Kitson on the bench, Kevin Doyle and Leroy Leiter led the Royal Strike Force. But it was Nicky Shorey who had the Argyle keeper stretching. The Medeski's first goal of the new season went to the visitors. Rufus Brevitt centre, veteran striker Mickey Evans was celebrating his first of the new campaign. Reading's first goal came soon after half time. Graham Murty's centre met by Leroy Leiter. The striker with an immediate repayment towards the Royals' £1 million investment. And Leroy always enjoys the moment. Reading had other chances, but in the 90th minute, Paul Watton's cross come shot was steered home by Nick Chadwick. It made the day for the Argyle players and around 4,000 travelling fans. An opening day defeat for the Royals. The Royals soon made amends. They collected their first points of the season on the midweek visit to Brighton. The travelling supporters were celebrating Glenn Little's first Reading goal since he joined the club in the summer of 2004. John Oster was sent on for his Royals debut and the goal which settled the contest was created by Nicky Shorey's left boot. Dave Kitson met the centre and Henderson was unable to stop the ball crossing the line. The Royals had their first points of the season. Next up, the trip to Preston. Bobby Convey and Leroy Leiter set about dismantling the Lily Whites. Convey's pass ruthlessly put away by Lita. Convey still had something to prove to Royal supporters, though his pass for Lita's second was outstanding. Lita with a first time strike. Leroy was firing on all cylinders, and a third goal soon followed. Nicky Shorey's delivery met by Glenn Little. After a season without a goal, two in a week for him. It would be easy to forget that Preston had been playoff finalists only three months earlier. Dickio, Alexander and Cresswell kept Marcus Harneman on his toes, but the Royals took the points from Deepdale. The opening week had got better and better. The supporters were warming to the new season and the Medeski threw open its doors for its annual open day. There was no shortage of photo opportunities, especially for the Royals' new hotshot, Leroy Lita. I don't think they love me yet, but you know, there's a long way to go, so I've got to keep working and trying to impress them. It had been a positive start to the new season. The fans had their own favourites. I have come to see Marcus Harneman, USA, because he's a solid keeper. He sure is. Yeah. I'm Dave Kitson. Lita, Kitson and Murty. Leroy, Lita and Kitson. I want to meet Hanneman because he's my hero. Like the fans, the players too were enjoying the day. Well, it's great. I think we're going to come out and 
you know, sign a whole bunch of autographs for the kids, and you know, they get to come meet us face to face, where a lot of them don't get that opportunity very often. They come and what's our what's our play and support us. So I think it's just the least we can do is just to come out and show our faces and and sign sign few things for it. I think it's just the least we can do. The autograph hunters were out in force. The Royals soon proved their ability to break quickly and effectively. They began the thumping of Millwall with Bobby Convey's solo charge. Riding challenges he raced 60 yards and calmly beat Andy Marshall. The Americans' stunning start to the campaign continued. The visitor's best effort came from the head of Ben May. Marcus Harneman flicked the ball away. The American keeper was on his way to a third successive clean sheet. For Colin Lee's Lions, the afternoon fell apart as James Harper charged down Marshall's clearance. Leroy Lita struck for goal and the keeper saved outside his area. Great save, wrong place. Marshall had to go. Millwall were in a mess with no keeper on the bench. Defender Mark Phillips took over in goal. Convey's free kick, too good for the stand-in keeper. The Royals were in full flow, Convey involved again, his centre and Harper's header found the top corner. Former Royal Sammy Igo then gave away a penalty, he handled. Dave Kitson scored despite Phillips' best efforts. At half-time, Adrian Saru became the Lions' third keeper of the afternoon. The second half was far quieter than the first. From Glen Little's corner, Steve Sidwell dived in to make it an emphatic 5-0 triumph, lifting the club to the highest league position in its long history. While the Royals put those five goals past Millwall, Luton, Queen's Park, Rangers and Wolves were all beaten. So Steve Cobble's team rose to the top of the pack and Sheffield United followed Reading up into second place. Debuts for Graham Stack and Chris Makin in the first round of the Carling Cup against League One side Swansea. And Dave Kitson gave Reading an early lead in front of a crowd of seven and a half thousand. Swansea had rarely looked a threat, but with just 10 minutes left, they equalised to take the game into extra time. The header from Akin Fenwa finding its way past Stack. Steve Coppola had brought on Leroy Lita just after the equaliser, and the substitution was to pay dividends. But it was Kitson who put Reading back in front in the first period of extra time. Latching onto Harper's pass, he rounded the keeper to claim his fourth goal in the opening five games. And Reading made sure of their place in the second round when Lita made it 3-1. Once again, Harper was the provider with a pinpoint cross and Lita doesn't miss those. Cue one of his trademark celebrations and the start of a cup run. James Harper played a key role in ensuring Reading came away with a point from Vicarage Road. The midfielder was in the right place at the right time to keep out this shot from Watford danger man Darius Henderson. After his defensive heroics, Harper then came up with a shot of the match, only for Ben Foster to produce a stunning save. And the Royals finished strongly as Ibra Sonko headed Convey's corner over the bar. 0-0 the final score.
A crowd of 14,000 saw the August Bank Holiday win over Burnley and the Royals got off to a flying start. A great finish from Leroy Lita as he continued his blistering start to the season. His fourth goal since joining from Bristol City in the summer. Another new signing, Kevin Doyle, came on for the injured Dave Kitson just before half-time and he was to make his mark later. But three minutes before the break, Burnley were back in the game. Adiak Mbaye taking advantage of a slip by Inga Marsen to grab the equaliser. 20 minutes from time though, it was Doyle who came up with the winner. A quick corner and from Convey's cross, the striker opened his account for the Royals. And there were plenty more to come from him. In the dying minutes, Burnley were reduced to 10 men when Gareth O'Connor lashed out at Convey. The referee left with little alternative, but the game was up by then for Burnley. A hard-earned victory and a new hero in Kevin Doyle. Reading denied victory by a late equaliser, but Coventry deserved their point. Only the woodwork keeping out added bowler's shot here. Reading had squandered a first-half penalty, awarded for a foul on Doyle. Lita stepped up to take the spot kick. A decent shot, but not good enough to beat Bywater. Midway through the second half, though, Reading got the breakthrough, and it was that man Doyle again, scoring at the second attempt. Coventry then laid siege to the Royals' goal and Marcus Harneman pulled off two great saves to deny Andy Morell and Gary McSheffrey. But with four minutes left, the keeper was finally beaten by Robert Page's brave header as the points were shared. Hanneman with the Reading goal kick. has played in all the Reading League games so far this season. Here's Doyle. Doyle's clear of the back four. Good save from Karai. Karai the man stretching out his right leg to deny Doyle the in-form Reading striker. Here come Palace down the right-hand side. Good run from Johnson into the area he goes. Referee looks interested and so does Johnson. Reading players will be breathing a sigh of relief there you suspect. Ian Dowie on the other hand asking questions of that referee here's Bobby Convey neat first touch from him Jinx in field teeing it up for Doyle Doyle with a strike and another good save from Karai catches it on the rebound Fitzhall the man who's back quickly for Palace Gunnison with a neat ball through to Doyle Gunnison continues his run Harper waits in the middle here's Doyle Doyle beats the first defender great strike from Kevin Doyle and that's the breakthrough that Reading and Steve Koppel wanted. Kevin Doyle heads off to greet the Reading fans. Terrific strike from in-form Kevin Doyle. Johnson takes the ball on his chest. Fine strike from Johnson. 1-1. Keeping up his hopes to head to the World Cup. Sven keeping an eye on him, no doubt. Andy Johnson's played full internationals in the past and that was the quality that's got him to that level. 1-1 and Reading trying to retake the lead. Murty up to Glenn Little. Little with the tricks. Wonderful skills from Little. Look at the footwork. In it goes. Deflection off the Palace defender. Terrific wing play from Glenn Little. Palace on the charge. Inga Marsen, the man backing off. Chance for a shot, perhaps. Good save from Hanneman. Hanneman absolutely in the right place at the right time. Here come Palace again, and Palace have got the lead. 2-1. Sharp finish. On the turn. And there go the celebrations. Palace clearly trying to keep up their form. Up to ninth in the championship on 10 points, and in contention for that playoff place at this early in the season. More defending for Reading to do here. Hanneman's out bravely. Fine save from the big American. Made himself big on the edge of that six-yard box. Convy for Reading. Leaves it for his captain, Graham Murty, running up on that right-hand side. 
And Little steps in, a natural right winger, swings it in. Hall with the defending. Oh, Lita with the acrobatics. What can you say about the million pound man? Worth every penny with finishing like that. 2-2. Two, two. Here's Little. Doyle on the overlapping run. The goalkeeper will have to be quick. There's a good shout for a penalty for Reading there. And again, the referee is having to make some difficult decisions. Lita from the penalty spot. Gore Corrali saves. And what's happening here? There's a chance. It may have to be retaken, I think. The referee is not impressed with the movement on the line from the goalkeeper, the Hungarian international moved early and the referee is going to try and sort this one out it's little with the retaken penalty will he have any more luck no saved well real drama at the Modeski stadium and this game balancing on a knife edge Reading squandering two penalty chances there first Lita and then Glenn Little and Ian Dowie he's been sent to the stands much to the joy of the Reading fans Ian Dowie the Crystal Palace manager giving the referee a piece of his mind and landing himself in trouble for it here comes Doyle down the left hand side strong and combative as ever and wins a free kick good play from the young Irish player down that left hand side and it's a chance for Little to swing the ball in to the penalty box then Little the right foot of him will be the man to swing it into the penalty box Every being pedantic about where the wall set up here come ready in swinger Sonko and Sonko is a man who puts Reading 3-2 up. Towering header. And that could be a very valuable three points to Reading. Continuing their charge, trying to keep in touch with Sheffield United at the top of the championship. Sonko's header could have sealed three points for Reading. And referee Brian Kirsten blows his final whistle. 3-2 to Reading. A terrific contest. Big crowd in on this Tuesday night. And they'll have enjoyed every minute of it. Yeah, it was, it was uh, probably the most exciting game I've played in for Reading so far, and it was, it was just one of those all-around good team performances. It was, uh, I think it was just a great game for everyone. I don't think you can single out one person for, for you know, doing anything better than anyone else. I think everyone put in, you know, uh, put in their all, and, and playing Saturday, Tuesday is really, really difficult, especially away and, and, and traveling Sunday. You're traveling right after the game back. Um, you know, I think it was just all-around good, good team performance and it shows why you know, we want to be promoted this year. Just tell me about that goal. I mean, is that one of your trademarks? Stunning yeah. goal. Yeah, I've scored a few of them. You know, um, when the ball's in the air like that, I don't think you don't get time to bring it down. So you got to do whatever comes to your mind first, and that was the first thing I thought. So and um, it's a good finish. It was terrific, and you know, even if we hadn't have won tonight, uh, I still would have been very, very satisfied with our performance. It was end-to-end uh, -end stuff two passionate sides who didn't want to lose you know we got the better of it today but uh, you know it was uh, fairly testing at various stages during the evening one's got to be blue one's got to be white can you do that the following day one of the royals goal scorers kevin doyle dropped in on a coaching session for primary school children at whitley Yeah, it's gone, it's gone well so far, I said, had a good pre-season, so that, that was good, I got a few goals in there, gave me a bit of confidence as well, so um, then uh, I've got, I came on a sub a good few times, got a good few runs, the manager gave me my chance and uh, it's gone well. Reading rode their luck in this game and only a marginal offside decision prevented Steve Jones from giving crew the lead just before half time. And the visitors continued to carve out chances after the break. Jones again causing trouble. He headed against the bar and it took a goal line clearance from James Harper to keep out Graham Murty's misdirected header. With just 12 minutes remaining, Reading grabbed the winner. And it was created by substitute John Oster. His cross met by Ivar Ingemarsson.
Luton in the second round of the Carling Cup meant debuts for Eric Obinar, the Nigerian striker from San Etienne, and Siku Baraji, the French midfield player who was on loan from West Ham. Both showed moments of quality in a game of few chances. Obinar's skill created one of the best openings for Leroy Lita. Extra time was looming when John Oster lined up a long-range free kick. It drifted all the way past a host of defenders and goalkeeper Dean Brill. Academy graduate Simon Cox came on for his first team debut. Not enough time to make a real impression, but the Royals ground out their victory to secure a place in the third round. After Wednesday's training session, a birthday surprise for kitman Ron Grant. He celebrated his 70th. <laughs> yeah, we love him to bits. He's a, he's a top man. He works very hard. Um, and we can't do enough for him, to be perfectly honest. Um, we love having him around. And um, if we can do anything to make it special for him, then we're more than willing. It's a massive, massive job, and you need someone who can interact with people and, and uh, you know, just get the job done. And Ron, for many, many years, um, longer than he'd care to remember, I think, has, has done that job fabulously well uh, for a number of managers. And, you know, I'm the lucky man at the moment who, who works with him. Reading had the better of the first half away at relegated Norwich, but they had to wait until the hour mark for what proved to be the winning goal. Glenn Little's raking pass found Kevin Doyle. He held off his defender before laying on a pass for James Harper, who scored at the second attempt. With just seconds of the game remaining, a hugely controversial moment, Callum Davenport went down under a challenge from Bobby Convey. The referee appeared to book the Norwich player for diving, but after consulting his assistant, he changed his mind and awarded a penalty. But perhaps justice was done when Dean Ashton dragged his shot wide. Three points for the Royals and their second victory of the month against a side relegated from the Premiership. This was a massive week in Reading season and now they headed south to St Mary's. We knew this week would be a big week for us and um, you know three big games against you know two of the teams came down from the Premiership and, and the first place team and you know it doesn't, doesn't get much better than that and, and we know this is a, a big test for our promotion push. It's beating Norwich 1-0 it was important and uh, we've got a few 1-0 results and it shows that I think we're playing well as a team to get not playing that well but to get the 1-0 results we're getting wins which is important and if we can keep it up we'll be delighted. A crowd of just under 25,000 saw the Royals enjoy an incredible escape in the opening minute. Nigel Quasi shot wide right in front of goal. It looked easier to score after Kenwyn Jones knocked down a real let off for Reading. Midway through the half, tempers frayed. Kevin Doyle went down in a clash with Southampton defender Darren Powell. Quasi was the only player booked, though Powell was subsequently suspended. The Reading goal came under increasing pressure. Harneman reacted superbly to block Jones's close range header. In the second half, Reading had their best opening. Little's inviting centre, Doyle sent his header just over. It was one of few chances for Steve Coppel's team. It had been a rearguard action for the Royals, perhaps their toughest test of the season so far. It finished goalless.
So Reading finished September six points behind the leaders. Their unbeaten league run now stretched back ten games. Sheffield United won all five of their league matches in September. They'd won eight in a row. So it was nicely set up for a date between the top two at the Medeski. Sheffield United are breaking new ground with their best start ever. Reading haven't been as quick from their blocks in 20 years, but the championship is a long distance challenge, not a sprint. The Coca-Cola Championship's top scorers up against its meanest defence. Reading have only conceded six goals all season. Their excellent start has been overshadowed by that of today's opponents. A Sheffield United win would be their ninth in a row, a club record. Doyle. And that is a corner conceded by David Unsworth. In by Little. Inga Marson didn't meet it as he might have wished. Here's Bobby Convey. Good start this by Reading. Out to Glenn Little. Deflected. Why? Another corner. Reading's opening to this fixture has been like their start to the season. Off to a flyer. Little the former Burnley man. Oh, and he was unmarked! And Reading have the lead inside two minutes. Brynjar Gunnarsson's first goal for the club. And that was not the marking of a championship leading team because Brynjar Gunnarsson was left all alone direct from Glenn Little's corner met sweetly on the volley goalkeeper leaden footed high fall Barbadian international did well to get the cross in did very well here's Alan Quinn It was a fantastic piece of wing play to get the cross in, fed back by Alan Quinn and Steve Cabot, who used to play for Steve Coppel at Crystal Palace, at Sheffield United level. Oh, and Kenny was outside his area and handled. Surely he used a glove. Referee, after some delay, has given the freak again. Surely Paddy Kenny has to go here. He's not had a great day. He woke up this morning feeling ill. He's been suffering from diarrhoea all morning. He was persuaded to play by Neil Warner. Yes, it hit his left arm. Deliberate handball outside the penalty area. Remember, Sheffield United do not have a reserve goalkeeper on the bench. It's a regular occurrence. Oh, it's only yellow. Well, how can that be? No wonder Reading are protesting. Convict. Gunnison, make it. Bring out Gunnison to cross. And the goalkeeper, who probably shouldn't be out there, plucks it out of the air. You can hear the reaction of the home fans. What a lucky chap. Quite apart from anything else, it is the denial of a goal scoring opportunity. It may well be that Montgomery's header back would have gone in for an own goal. If not, Conve might have polished it off. And now it's all going off down in the technical areas. Make in. Little. Beating Unsworth. Cross comes Bromby. Through his legs. It's been a 
a good player for a long, long time now, Glenn Little. Steve Cockle has forsaken his seat in the director's box. As a man that likes to watch, observe, and then react. Doyle. ball to strike just curled away just from the thick end of 25 yards out some premiership clubs may be struggling to fill their grounds the case in the championship with Reading just over 22,000 inside the hugely impressive Wadeshki Stadium today by far and away the biggest of the season so far and they've seen a pretty good game Gillespie oh was that a foul Looked suspiciously like it. James Harper came careering in and just seemed to take Keith Gillespie out. It's a look of disbelief. Knocked the ball away from him and then back. Inside the area. Should have been a penalty. I don't like accusing referees of such things. I'm sure he didn't do it deliberately, Grant Hegley, but maybe in that moment he's just evened things up. Make in. And ball by Quinn. Only five yards from the referee's assistant. Reading has shown plenty of ambition. Harper organising matters inside the penalty area. Four six foot plus players in there. Oh, good header! It's in! Reading have got it! Rinya Gunnison with his second goal of the afternoon. And we're in the 89th minute. The goalkeeper who is lucky to be out there, beaten by the most delicate of glancing headers from the Icelander. Sheffield United's long winning run is going to end at eight. And now they're struggling even to get a point out of this. No goals before today for Reading. Two. 90 minutes of Brynjar Gunnarsson and Reading are on the point of cutting back Sheffield United's huge lead. It's a super header. Use the same adjective to describe the marking though. Too much for Sheffield United to do now. It's all over, and Reading have won. It's never good when a referee is the central figure, and he's being harangued by Keith Gillespie over that penalty decision, and Gillespie may well talk himself into trouble. This contest, though, will be recalled, as much as anything, for two mystifying moments from Grant Hegley. No red card for Paddy Kenny. No penalty for Keith Gillespie. Aside from that, though, an unlikely hero emerged. The Icelander, Brynjar Gunnarsson, with both the Reading goals. The first summit meeting of the championship season has certainly not disappointed. It's finished Reading 2, Sheffield United 1. Oh, and Kenny was outside his area and handled. I think the referee got it wrong. That's all, you know, it needs to be said about it. I think if he looks at it in the cold light of day, um, you know, without anyone bending his ear, I think he'll admit he got it wrong. Certainly for consistency with every other referee and every other handball outside the box, given the proximity of the goal and defenders, you know, they've almost been automatic sending offs. So I can't see how, you know, he, he could have imagined it wasn't um, a red card. 
Messi hit his left arm. Deliberate handball. Oh, it's only yellow. I was talking to the referee. He said, "Yeah, it wasn't like it wasn't. We we had no chance to score." I said, "It could have been our own goal," but he said, "Nah, it's something like very much. You know, I mean, I'm saying like uh, he's the last defender. He touches his hand, and you don't send him off." And I said, "If I do it, you send him off. He send me off. So why not him?" He yeah. said, oh, "You know, I'm not gonna kill the game. You know, he's a goalkeeper, and you know, I need, I need the game to keep playing." So I said, "All right, no problem. You know, but it's football." You've beaten the league leaders. Is there confidence around the place that you can stay, you know, right there at the top of the league? Uh, yeah, that's what the win today gives us. It's, it's a confidence to to keep on keep on playing, and uh, maybe it's not going to be a final. Well, uh, <laughs> 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 I knew, I knew something was coming there. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, we. That's another game. In, uh, in the league and we've got three points it, and we see what happens in, in April. <laughs> Kingsley was at the club's megastore meeting some younger supporters. Steve Sidwell also did his bit as the club launched its seven scheme, attracting scores of new young supporters to the Royals colours. There's your poster, side by side. not really, not really. Nicky Forster returned to the Medeski as Ipswich provided the opposition on a Sunday lunchtime. And after missing seven games, Nicky Shorey returned to the Royals' defence. Makin to Little, Makin replacing Murty, who's struggling with a hamstring injury this afternoon. Back to Makin. And now to the hard working Doyle. Doyle into the middle and Naylor's the man with the last touch. It's a horrible own goal for the Ipswich defender sliding in, unable to deal with it. 1-0 to Reading. Created by that man Doyle. Just the start that Steve Koppel wanted. In from Doyle. Naylor puts it past his own goalkeeper Price. Kevley with the throw. Goes the flick on the turn. And in it goes. Is it going to be allowed? Nicky Forster. And Paul says the referee, Steve Tanner, unimpressed with Nicky Forster's effort. Joe Royal unimpressed with the referee. See it again. Handball. Yes, clearly. Nicky Forster on the edge of that six-yard box. Scored 63 goals in six years for Reading. Thought he'd score one against Reading, did Nicky Forster. Joe Royal, old schoolmate of Steve Copples. Both went to Quarry Bank School up in Liverpool. Watching his Ipswich team nervously. 17 points from their first 11 games. The Tractor Boys starting this season as favourites to win promotion come the end of the year, having lost in the semi finals of the playoff against West Ham last season. Reading trying to do something about that. Glenn Little, the man who's putting pressure on that back four. Out it goes via Ipswich feet. Nice little step in from Little. And here they go. Cross comes in from that right-hand side. Waiting is Doyle, and he's strong, and he scores. 2-0 to Reading. Well, this Irishman is really setting the world on fire since joining Reading. Strong header. Celebrates with Lita. Climbs well. Good cross in from the right-hand side by Little. Lita is waiting as well. Doyle, the man with the finish. Up. Best goal difference in the country, bar Chelsea. Best defensive record in the country, bar no one. So far, another clean sheet for Marcus Hanneman and his makeshift back four. Here's Doyle, the goal scorer on the run for Reading. He's got Lita to his right and he picks out Lita. Lita crashes the post. The ricochet, Doyle with the bar. Goodness me, all happening for Reading. They can't hit the back of the net. Appeals for a Wilmer's handball. He was trying to make the clearance as the ball came back off the bar. On the watch of this, does Wilmer's handle it? Actually, in the bar from Doyle, that goes Wilmer's sets up the ball. <laughs> they 
come Reading again 2-0 up and looking to try and see all the three points with an emphatic win long strike and it's a good little tip over the bar from Price the Welsh international goalkeeper watch that one carefully Nicky Shorey missing for Reading recently since the 2 on win against Burnley in August that's when he last played his first team football showing there he's properly over his knee injury and Ipswich to produce anything sensational at the close of this game Hanneman spilt it here come Ipswich and Sonko particularly stylish clearance in fact courtesy of his face Sonko in the right place at the right time powerful strike Sonko clean over and there we have it Steve Goppel shakes hands with his opposite number Joe Royal Kevin Doyle the goal scorer a 2-0 win for Reading confirms their position in second at the top of the championship there was no respite for the Royals the following day they headed for Hull and a Tuesday evening fixture at the KC Stadium. Peter Taylor's side scored first, Chris Brown steering the ball home from close range. Reading's pressure finally produced an equaliser, Nicky Shorey's delivery and Glenn Little applied the finish, a point the Royals certainly merited. Dave Kitson returned to the Royals lineup for the first time since August for the trip to the Britannia Stadium. Kevin Doyle's persistence on the left and good work by Glenn Little teed up an opportunity for Brynjar Gunnarsson. The decisive goal began with Convey seizing on a wayward pass. He cut inside and as Kitson prepared to shoot, he was bundled over. Referee Graham Salisbury awarded a spot kick. Which Kitson dispatched to seal the victory. A satisfying moment for the striker who'd been taunted by the home fans. The top two in the championship met again in the third round of the Carling Cup. And Kitson's finishing ability won the night for Reading. Once again, Koppel's cup side rose to the challenge. Credit too to Stephen Hunt. Both goals began with his swinging centres. Eric Abina laid on the second for Kitson. With Lita injured, the manner of Kitson's return was a big lift for the Reading squad. Strikers, it's a very lifeblood goal, and uh, I know he'll be well pleased with that. We've got three tough matches to come, starting on Saturday, and inevitably we'll be judged on the quality of those results. So, you know, we're looking forward now. This this game tonight is very firmly in the past, as far as we're concerned. Reading's next visitors were Leeds United, one of the clubs pushing hard to close the gap on the top two. The first half was goalless. Little. Kitson. Convey. Doyle! That's as close as either side has come to a goal. Leeds unlocked by the first time cushioned volleyed ball from Bobby Convey. And Doyle, only a yard wide. Glenn Little. Run! Gary Kelly behind. Both the central defenders are forward. Inga Marson and Sonko. Butler's header. Convey. Brynjar Gunnarsson! 1-0 to Reading!
Steve Koppel, terminally understated. But elsewhere around this stadium, rapture. The Icelander saves his goals for the big games. Two to see off Sheffield United. And now a very important one to put his team in front against Leeds United. <laughs> Kelly, in his 15th season in the Leeds first team. Challenge was by Hulse. Here's Healy. Good save, Marcus Hahnemann. Really, the first genuine stop he's had to make. Harding. Douglas. Inga Marsen aware of Moore's arrival. Healy! Took a deflection and leads a level. It went in off the heel of Inga Marsen. But that won't stop David Healy claiming it. The mistake by the same Reading defender, the clearance straight to David Healy. And as the goalkeeper went down to field the Ulsterman shot, the right heel of Eva Ingemarsson took it beyond his own keeper. 1-1 then, with 15 minutes to play. There's a happier manager. His substitute had been on the field for only nine minutes. Difficult to tell with Steve Koppel whether his side has just scored or just conceded. Kelly. Derry. Douglas. And still Jonathan Douglas! And it'll come out for Healy! And Hahnemann down bravely at the feet of Ian Moore. Another exciting day at the stadium that bears the chairman's name. Little. Pulled himself. Shepherded wide by Harding. And then Harding took him down. It's a free kick. He knew what he was doing. Reading scored in the last minute to beat Sheffield United. Sidwell's header! Oh! Blocked right on the line between the legs of Gary Kelly. Unorthodox and ungainly. And I would imagine pretty uncomfortable too. Hunt. Doyle forcing his way in front of Butler and he's got the legs on the league skipper as well Gets in! Good save! Neil Sullivan with the best piece of goalkeeping we've seen at either end all afternoon long really alert to get down at the base of his post Reading on the point of rewriting their own club history Indeed, a new club record for Reading, 18 games unbeaten. Honours even today, Reading will be disappointed by that, having taken the lead through Gunnarsson. Inga Marsson's misfortune led to David Healy's equaliser. Both sides have started the season very well, but it's not where you are when the clocks go back that matters. It's where you are when they're finally wound forward. Brynjar Gunnarsson! 1-0 to Reading! We've done reasonably well in the last three or four years, I think, at the beginning of the season. And it's the test for us is to continue. Uh, and the quality of performance today, if we can continue to play like that, we'll be OK. So a home draw left the Royals three points behind the leaders. Of the top six, only Watford finished the month with a victory. The Royals were now unbeaten in 18 league and cup matches, a notable club record. So no surprise that Steve Koppel was the Championship Manager of the Month. The next visitors, also from South Yorkshire, were Paul Sturrock Sheffer Wednesday. And Marcus Harneman was not only at his best to deny Richie Partridge, but he immediately launched the break which led to the opening goal. Kevin Doyle's cut back and Glenn Whelan turned the ball into his own net. 
So 1-0 at the break. There were other chances and a strong penalty appeal was ignored before Glenn Little's outstanding work set up Dave Kitson. No doubt who scored that one. And although Chris Brunt's effort hit the woodwork, the Roars had another victory. A time for optimism. Did you feel that the club is on the verge of something special this season? We're always on the verge of something special, Chris. Um, I thought it was a very convincing performance tonight, I have to say. And, uh, you know, that nine-point cushion is fantastic. But it's still early days. We've got to get through the Christmas period. And um, it's a long old haul till the end of the season. Quite a lot of more games to go. But obviously very optimistic at this stage of the season. Steve Cobble's squad then headed to Loftus Road, attempting to extend their unbeaten run to 20 league and cup matches. Dave Kitson's delightful flick teed up the opening goal for James Harper. Harper beating Simon Royce for his third goal of the season. Just after half time, Ian Holloway's team levelled. Steve Sidwell was battling for possession, but the ball rolled into the path of Lee Cook. The Rangers' celebrations didn't last. John Oster's corner was met by Eva Ingemarsson, whose stumping header secured another victory. Good times for the Royals. Everyone's confidence is so high right now that because we're winning all these games, I think that, you know, and, you know, we haven't lost now in 20, I think. It's kind of crazy. We really have got a good chance of doing it this year and all the lads sense it and feel it and the only way that we can um, not do it is by us throwing it away. The feel-good factor spiralled to another level as Reading were drawn to play at Arsenal in the fourth round of the Carling Cup. It seemed everyone wanted a ticket. Reading's initial allocation of 5,000 tickets soon sold out. The club had no intention of being distracted by the cup adventure to come. After a two-week break, Hull arrived. Bobby Convey was denied an early goal by Hull's Boers My Hill, but the Americans soon had Reading in front. Calmly slotting home his first goal since August. Just after half-time, Hull tied the scores. Nicky Barmby with a close-range header in front of the travelling fans. But Reading's second-half pressure eventually told, and he won it with two goals in two minutes. First, Kevin Doyle produced an acrobatic finish to restore Reading's lead. Barely 90 seconds later, Reading broke from their own half. Glenn Little started the move. Bobby Convey strode forward. And Little was there to finish it. A wonderful goal. And Kingsley's presence ensured a memorable celebration. Late on, Leroy Lita had a candidate for miss of the season, but the points were in the bag. Flat out, Reading had closed the gap at the top to just one point. That midweek, Reading went to Portman Road and overpowered Joe Royal's side. They took the lead when Convey's shot fell for the on-rushing Steve Sidwell to sweep home. Early in the second half, Kevin Doyle cut the ball back and Leroy Lita was among the goals again. And with Reading in complete control, Sonko and Lita got touches before Doyle added number three. A special night as the Royals rose to the top of the championship. 
Yeah, I mean, we've, we've been performing like that all season and, uh, you know, we're just taking it, you know, step by step, game by game and, uh, you know, it's working for us. Next stop for 1,500 travelling fans was Home Park Plymouth. Once again, Marcus Harleman made a vital save. And Reading profited within seconds. Kevin Doyle and Bobby Convey led the counter-attack. The ball eventually broke for Glenn Little. And he produced an exquisite finish. It was a high-quality goal. Reading in front moments after they could have fallen behind. In the second half, a second goal put the contest beyond doubt. Good work by Lita, whose centre was steered home by Kevin Doyle. The Royals were on a roll at the top of the championship. It had been a memorable November. Steve Koppel received another Manager of the Month award and his team moved four points clear of Sheffield United. The Blades had collected just two points from their last three matches. Reading had taken all 15 points from their five league games in November. They had a 13-point cushion over Watford. The mood was perfect for a cup trip to Highbury. The club could now enjoy its night out at Highbury. It's historic as well, isn't it? Because you know, Arsenal won't be playing there next season, and uh, I think it's just something we had to go to. It's something special, something to remember, and we're going to win, obviously. It's a, it's a nice little distraction for us. It's nice to go there and play Highbury, which is a fantastic service and a lovely stadium. But our, our bread and butter, as the manager says all the time, is the league, and we have to perform there every week. Around 7,000 Reading fans made the trip. And they saw their side create some decent openings. But it was Arsene Wenger's young gunners who supplied a masterclass in finishing. Jose Antonio Reyes scored the first after just 12 minutes. Arsene Wenger's side certainly didn't have it all their own way. An attempted clearance by Senderos fell for Leroy Lita. Only Almunia's sharp goalkeeping denied Reading an equaliser. Reading's best move of the match saw John Oster breaking forward. And Graham Murty's centre was met perfectly by Dave Kitson. Fortunately for the Arsenal keeper, the header was straight at him. Moments later, Reading were two down. Reyes teed the chance up, and it was Robin Van Persie who beat Graham Stack. Steve Sidwell, James Harper and Stack all played well on the return to Highbury. A save from Kerry Gilbert, the highlight of Stack's night. Midway through the second half, a mistake by Ibrahim Asonko was punished by Lupoli. Sonko's error apart, it had been a memorable night out, and the Gunners' clinical finishing was the major factor. Reading played well, they were threatening always going forward, and uh, I felt that we needed all uh, different aspects of, of the top level game, you know, uh, sticking together when it was difficult and uh, use our mobility, our movement on the breaks and uh, use our finishing as well, top class finishing, we scored great goals and uh, we looked always dangerous going forward. It's just a nice memory to have in years to come, play the Highbury, um, you know, famous old stadium. Um, you know, it's it's done, we're privileged to have come here and we look upon it that way. Will it help us in this season? No, absolutely not. Will it help us next year? No. Reading soon bounced back to winning ways as the manager restored his first team regulars for the visit of Luton. With half-time approaching, Nicky Shorey and Bobby Convey combined on the left. The American centre was only cleared as far as Steve Sidwell. His drive took a deflection to beat Marlon Beresford.
As the match moved into the final 15 minutes, Luton was still very much in it. But from Glen Little's free kick, Kitson headed the Royals towards another three points. Reading added a third. Graham Murty linked up with Glen Little. This time, Kevin Doyle connected for his fourth goal in four successive league matches. It may not have been as comfortable as the 3-0 scoreline suggested, though the unbeaten league run was intact. I certainly think Reading are virtually there, to be quite honest. I mean, it's a phenomenal point total, 53 after 22 games, and um, it would take a, a miracle now to stop them. No chance. Well, we got a long way to go. Um, you know, I mean, this, I don't even think the season's halfway over yet. Um, we've had a really difficult time over Christmas. We've got five games or whatever. And, um, if we win all those games, and then all the games in January and February, and maybe March, I think we'll be there then. League match 23, the halfway point in the league season. Mark McGee's Brighton tried to unsettle Reading and deny them a seventh successive league win. And for 27 minutes, they kept the Royals at bay until Glenn Little's trickery on the right provided the breakthrough. Defender Charlie Oatway turned the ball into his own goal. The Seagulls offered stubborn resistance, but soon after the break, Dave Kitson was hauled down by Gary Elphick. The defender on his debut shown a second yellow card. From the free kick which followed, Kitson fell. Referee Paul Taylor thought he'd been pushed and awarded the Royals a penalty. Kitson accepted the gift. The Medeski was rocking and Reading were running riot. When Nicky Shorey's effort looped up, Kitson rose to head number three past Alan Blaney. Shorey soon supplied another. This time Stephen Hunt applied the finish. His first Reading goal. A wayward pass from Stephen Sidwell was cut out by Colin Kazim Richards. He strode forward and smashed an unstoppable shot past Marcus Hahnemann. It was no more than a consolation. Even Graham Murty went close to a goal before Sidwell's efforts laid on number five. It was Kitson's goal, though Hunt appeared ready to lodge his claim. A 5-1 demolition. And as Kitson left with the match ball, Leeds had lost. So Reading opened up a 17-point advantage over Watford and Leeds. The final match before a Merry Christmas. There were plenty of chances. When it finally arrived, the opening goal was well made and superbly taken. Graham Murty held off a challenge down the right. Kitson laid the ball off and Kevin Doyle picked out Steve Sidwell. A thumping finish. Soon after half-time, Doyle's pace and power had defender Tony Craig in trouble. The Millwall man protested, but he was off. Dave Kitson stepped forward, but keeper Colin Doyle saved with his legs. It was end-to-end -end stuff, as the goal which sealed the points illustrated. Nicky Shorey ran from his own half. And he just kept going. 
He fed Doyle who cut the ball past his namesake. 2-0 to Reading and eight league wins in a row, the club's best sequence for two decades. And the best present of all, Reading had a 20-point cushion over Watford in third. With four matches to play in eight days over Christmas and New Year, Kevin Doyle had to be quick with his Christmas shopping. <laughs> Boxing Day took the Royals to Molyneux. Glenn Hoddle's team went into the Christmas programme in sixth place and unbeaten in their previous eight games. They met a Reading team in excellent form. Towards Ingemars, he's turned out as far as Little, and back in towards Kitson, off the crossbar, off again off the bar, and now it's the roof of the net. Dave Kitson was the unlucky man. Not once, but twice. Reacted so well as Glenn Little held the ball in, reacted to his own effort coming back off the bar, and then Brynjar Gunnarsson with the uh, third attempt on goal, finding only the roof of the net. Tidy play from Murty. Little. Murty steaming on. Nice stops there again for Walls. A challenge though from Little. Let's go out of position now. Oh, terrific run from Glenn Little. Four in support of him. Coached into Kinson. Really good goal for Reading. Dave Kinson scored it. Glenn Little made it. Wonderful play by the winger. And Dave Kinson, nine goals in his last ten matches, gives Reading the lead, which he almost gave them in the opening moments. Little it was who dispossessed Lescott and that takes some doing. He did have plenty of options, but he chose exactly the right one. And Dave Kitson, who's had a stop-start season through injuries, but it's never stopped him scoring, has got his 13th of the season. They are the Championship's leading goal scorers. Sitting in a temporary stand there. Amazingly, they all got the same thing for Christmas. Reading out Glenn Little down for the moment. One or two whistles, but uh, he's certainly not faking it, is he? That's quite a gash. Just on the joint there, it's not going to heal too quickly there. Oster with a free kick. Oh, there was some space there for Gunnison, it needed a tip from Postma. Brilliant Gunnison just tiptoed between defenders into some space there, and he had a really good chance, maybe better than he made of it. But he still forced Stefan Postma to help it on its way over the crossbar. Convey. It's a lively run by the American and a good shot to him. Bobby Convey doubles Reading's lead. Superb individual goal by a man who is World Cup Finals bound next summer, Bobby Convey. Walls allowed him to run, allowed him to get his shot away, and he could not have placed it more accurately. Just beyond the considerable reach of Stefan Posma, just inside the post. Steve Koppel demanding concentration. It's a space for Edwards. Been allowed to run a long way here, Edwards. Sonko came out though. Cameron keeping the move alive. Anderson with the cross. Oh, it was a good chance to 
from Sol Kikan. And that's the closest that Wolves have come to scoring. Thrashing header against the crossbar. Well delivered cross from Darren Anderson. And the uh, South Korean World Cup semi finalist Sol Ki Hyun managed to direct the header goalwards. Gunnison taking on too much and running into Cameron. Oh, the second time that Hunneman's crossbar has been twanged. It's a problem of Reading's own making. Just got a little bit loose and a little bit careless there. And Colin Cameron's pot shot, which certainly swung, deceived and beat Hanneman, but not his crossbar. The uh, Football League record for a season is 105 points. That was Sunderland in this division six seasons ago. Reading had 56 at halfway on course. This will move them on to 62. I don't know what their priorities will be. Possibilities are endless for them. Doyle trying to add to their tally today. Needed a good save from Posma. Hunt back to Shorey. That's cleverly done. Shorey shot, charged down by Craddock. There's some talented emerging players in this Reading side. Doyle certainly one of them. Remorseless, relentless, ready. Nine straight wins. This one of the best of a season that just gets better and better. 50 championship goals they've scored now. Kitson and Convey, today's scorers. They look unstoppable. We go game by game, and I think we take our, our manager's mentality. You know, is, is get the three points. You know, every game, and then you know by the end of the season, we'll be we'll be where we want to be. Two days later, the final home match of 2005. Visitors Leicester fought hard to keep Reading at bay, but on the hour mark, Dave Kitson's pass sent Kevin Doyle clear. The Irish striker coolly beat Scotland's keeper, Rab Douglas. Victory had been hard earned. Grignard Gunnison, on as a substitute, headed the second to secure a tenth successive league victory. It seems like uh, five minutes when you're running through one-on-one. -on -one. It was a great ball from Kitts who put me in. And, you know, it, it seems like the worst stops when you're going through one-on-one. -on -one. And, um, you know, it was, nice, it was nice to score. Dave Kitson picked up an injury against Leicester, so sat out the New Year's Eve match at Derby. In away, 18th in the league. And here they come down the right-hand side. Reading have some defending to do here. And here comes Johnson for Derby to put them one up. Good finish, well-timed run. And the Rams have rattled the Royals. Sonko for Reading. Trying to find the goal to put them back on level terms with Derby. Reading six points clear at the top of the championship. Sheffield United in second. Captain Murty finds Gunnison, who's in for James Harper, rested today. Here's Little for Reading, dinks it in, and there's the goal for Reading. And it's that man Kevin Doyle again. Doyle's 11th goal of the season. Well worked down the right-hand side, as ever, the supply line, the right midfielder, Glenn Little. Doyle strong on that near post, 1-1. ball for Reading and to Stephen Hunt tenacious as ever to Sidwell Sidwell fancies a shot on goal not a bad one Lee Camp the England under 21 international it's a good save down to his left there long ball pumped forward rather hopefully by Derby here's Johnson on the edge of the box and Johnson scores 2-1 to Derby 
Nothing Hanneman could do as the ball came through the crowd. Reading conceding the second goal of the evening. Not a happy end to 2005 so far. Neatly and invitingly onto Johnson's left foot. Goes Bobby Convey, Steve Coppel ringing the changes. Youngster Shane Long, 18 years of age, enters the fray. And finished 2005 with a goal. Only a few hours of this year left. And Reading find themselves 2 1 down at Pride Park. Here come Reading. Shane Long looked like he might have been away. Davis shown another yellow and that could be off for Andy Davis yes it is two yellows to the central defender a horrible challenge earlier on in the game this time against Shane Long scything in a similar position Derby down to ten men Steve Coppel a nervous man really good. on 25 championship games without defeat can they grab a draw here Shorey with the corner bounces rather scrappily Long's there and Reading have surely grabbed an equaliser and a point. The 18-year-old Irishman could have saved the day for Reading and keeps their unbeaten record intact. In swinging corner, headed back in. And Long was right on hand. And rose the highest. 2-2 Two -two into injury time. It had been a very Merry Christmas and promised to be a new year to celebrate. As supporters studied the table in disbelief, Steve Cobble's side began 2006 18 points clear of third place Leeds and were unbeaten in 26 successive league games. In the 2004-2005 season, Reading were third in the championship table after a 3-0 Boxing Day victory over Watford. The Royals' promotion challenge stumbled as the side went 11 championship matches without a victory. Memories of that sequence of results loomed large every time the prospect of promotion was raised in the 05-06 campaign. Reading began the year with a seven-point lead over Sheffield United and crucially an 18-point cushion over third-placed Leeds United. The Royals were unbeaten in 26 successive league games. They had 19 more to play. The challenge now was to stay the course. The first huddle of the new year, and with thousands of half-season tickets sold, the New Year Bank holiday drew more than 22,500 spectators, a new high for the season. Cardiff arrived from just outside the playoff places, and when Alan Lee had a sight of goal, Marcus Harneman saved with his legs. Moments later, Harneman's throw set Bobby Convey racing forward. From one flank to another, the American cut inside and brought Glenn Little into the move. Little's centre was met with an unstoppable header by Steve Sidwell. A superb goal to launch the new year. On the half hour, Nicky Shorey's free kick was met by Ibra Sonko. Once again, the header gave Bluebirds keeper Neil Alexander no chance. The onslaught continued after the break. Little's trickery worked for Kitson. The strikers' scoring form continued. The visitors pulled a goal back when Cameron Jerome's shot appeared to take a deflection off Sonko as it flashed past Harneman. It was just a blip though, and Reading soon had a fourth. This time a Shorey free kick, and Sidwell was diving in for his second of the afternoon.
The previous season, Reading's promotion challenge folded around the turn of the year. No sign of any capitulation here. The New Year celebrations continued. Glenn Leuven's handled and Kitson dispatched the penalty he'd scored seven times in six championship matches. The Royals were superb. There could have been more goals. Sidwell was so close to his hat-trick. It would have topped off uh... You know, a fine performance, not just from me, but from the team itself. And, uh, you know, it's not just about the goals, it's about the team performance. And today I thought we was magnificent from start to finish. You know, the results send out their own message to everyone. You only have to open the newspaper and see Reading 1-5-1 again at home. And um, that says enough, we don't have to say anything. And, um, you know, we're not a group of people that like to blow our own trumpet. And... Uh, if we continue in that manner, you know, I, I think it could be a good year for us. The first Saturday of the new year and the beginning of another cup adventure. Steve Koppel rang the changes. Both goals came from late penalties. The first was awarded against Chris Makin after striker Jeff Horsfield tumbled. Baggies substitute Zoltan Gera beat Graham Stack with the spot kick. Just two minutes later, referee Matt Messiah awarded another penalty, this time in favour of Reading, as Ivar Ingemarsson's header struck Martin Albrechtson on the arm. It gave this Royal side, showing six changes, an opportunity to earn a draw. And Kevin Doyle, on as a substitute, sent Chris Kirkland the wrong way to take the Premiership strugglers back to the Medeski. Reading's goal scorer at the Hawthorns was among six regulars restored to the starting lineup for the visit of Coventry. Mickey Adams' side had improved since the return of former Royals favourite Aidy Williams. A crowd of almost 23,000 saw Reading break the deadlock just after half time. Nicky Shorey had won possession, Bobby Convey got away down the left and when Kevin Doyle blocked defender Williams, Dave Kitson delivered a first-class finish. Reading's defensive qualities were also tested and Marcus Hahnemann produced several world-class saves. After palming away Don Hutchison's free kick, James Scowcroft's header was looping goalwards until the keeper scrambled back. Once again, the strength and value of the Reading bench was apparent in the goal which secured the points. Stephen Hunt was on in place of Convey. His tenacity and trickery eventually laid on a simple finish for Dave Kitson. With Sheffield United drawing and Leeds beaten by Brighton, Reading strengthened their position at the top of the championship. And Hahnemann capped an excellent individual display by keeping a clean sheet. The following Tuesday evening, the Medeski staged the FA Cup third round replay against West Brom. Stack, Sidwell, Hunt, Oster and Makin all returned, as did Leroy Lita, making his first start for six weeks. He led the Royals' attack alongside Shane Long. Bitterly cold here at the Medeski Stadium. West Brom and Chaplow's free. And Chaplow scores. 
Not the start Reading wanted, nine minutes gone, and it's Richard Chaplow who puts West Brom ahead. Reading with early problems. And how did Chaplow get quite so much space around the back? That could be the question that Reading captain Graham Murty may be asking himself and the rest of his back line. Cup replay looked like they could be in early trouble if only once got to the semi finals. That back in 1927. Here goes across. Chaplow's there to chuck it home. Oh dear, problems for Reading. 2 0 down. Both the goals coming in this first half through Chaplow. The ball in from the left hand side, but Reading would have been rather hoping that one of the defenders might have dealt with it. who are trying to fight their way back into the game in this second half. 2-0 down. Both goals coming from Chaplow. John Oster. Football in from Oster. Lita on the turn and Lita scores. Puts Reading back in the game. 2-1. Lita has put an end to his goal drought. Last time he scored was November the 22nd. He's had his ankle and shin problems since then. They're turning sharply. Slotting at home for his eighth goal of the season. Good first touch. Equally good finish. A draw up at the Hawthorns ten days ago play that neither side wanted. West Brom with their own problems trying to survive in the Premiership. Reading with one eye on the Championship. Don't say no to a, another outing in the FA Cup this season now I'm sure. Harper link up play in the midfield from Reading into Lita. Oh what a strike from Leroy Lita. Squeezing it into the top corner. What a finish. 2-2 Sends Ron Grant, the kit man, onto the turf. But what a finish from Lita. Will be a candidate for goal of the season. A real net buster from Lita. Just look at this. Sweet as you like, right into the top corner. Ooh, Lita clearly enjoyed that one. I guess that's what you get for a million pounds. The final whistle, 2-2. Chaplow with both the West Brom goals in the first half, and that man Leroy Lita with both Reading goals in the second half. Steve Koppel with some thinking and some talking to do. 2-2. Into extra time we go. Makin needs to work the ball forward. Leroy Lita picks it up, combines neatly with Oster. And here's Harper. Harper with a chance. Lita's there as well. And Lita puts Reading 3 2 up. From 2 0 down, Leroy Lita's hat trick has maybe won the game and won the tie for Reading. What a performance from the youngster. Came into this game without the best goal scoring form behind him. But he's really shown some good form tonight. His first hat trick for Reading. Celebrates by ripping his shirt off and picking up a yellow card for his troubles, but he won't care a jot. Could that have put Reading into the fourth round of the FA Cup and a possible tie against either Birmingham or Torquay? Premiership Giants have crashed out here at the Medeski Stadium and it's all down to the man who's proudly got the match ball tucked underneath his arm. Leroy Lita with a hat-trick to beat West Brom 3-2.
the team, we played very well. I thought we passed the ball well. We was the far better team, you know, tonight. Um, we played some good football. And I don't think, it was, as the gaffer said in change room, that wasn't passion. That was about quality of play, and we showed a lot of that tonight. Terrific breakdown, really pleased with him because he's, you know, he's, he enjoys scoring goals. He's like that every day in training when he scores. Like the shirt comes off and he roars around. So it's a pleasure for to see someone enjoy what they're doing. You've got to tell him to keep that shirt on, there, haven't you? And I don't mind how many times he takes it off if he, if he, if he scores and takes it off. That do me, I don't mind. Can you come a tiny bit further forward for me? With the transfer window open, the club underlined its ambition, signing 23-year-old defender John Halls from Stoke City. With a Premiership Cup scout behind them and Birmingham confirmed as their fourth round opponents, the Royals return to the Championship and a Friday night live on television at Selhurst Park. Palace were fifth in the table and they'd won six games in a row. As usual, Andy Johnson was the Eagles' danger man. In the first five minutes, he latched on to James Harper's wayward pass, but Marcus Harneman blocked the way. The Palace striker was hoping to further his international claims, with the England manager looking on. Palace had the initiative, and Johnson posed the biggest threat. But if anyone was enhancing their World Cup prospects, it was the Reading keeper. Soon after half-time, a clever touch by Steve Sidwell gave Glenn Little a sight of goal. Gabor Karai in the Palace goal pushed the ball to safety. It was an evening when the Reading goal had to absorb a lot of pressure. The defence was outstanding. Sonko was a towering influence. Amid the drama, Bobby Convey produced one of the season's miss kicks. Harneman continued to win his personal duel with Johnson. The Royals then suffered a major injury blow. Dave Kitson hobbled out of the match. Steve Koppel had Leroy Lita, fresh from his cup hat-trick, a more than capable replacement. Kitson would be out for a couple of weeks, and treatment would force him to miss out on a mid-season break in Portugal. His goal-scoring touch had brought him nine goals in the previous seven championship matches. With 11 minutes remaining, Johnson finally got the better of the Reading keeper. He won the race to the ball and Palace had a penalty. In front of the England manager, Johnson finally had something to celebrate, though his decision to enjoy the moment in front of the Royals fans helped him to a yellow card. It was a season when the Royals conjured up numerous fightbacks. The immediate response here was as satisfying as any. James Harper was on the end of an excellent move, and the celebrations told their own story. Koppel kept his cool. Murty had won possession, little passed for Lita, and a lovely touch from the substitute. Harper's execution was perfect. The Royals' unbeaten run remained intact, thanks to Harper's strike, but also because the Royals' back line stood firm. Harneman just kept on denying Johnson.
A valuable draw for the Royals. The Palace boss looked less than impressed. After their short training break in Portugal, the Royals returned for the fourth round of the FA Cup. After putting West Brom out in round three, another struggling Midlands side was in the firing line. A new season-high crowd of 23,700 saw Shane Long put the Royals in front in the first half. A few days before his 19th birthday, Long had his first FA Cup goal. Both managers had other priorities. A replay wasn't ideal. But 10 minutes after arriving as a substitute, David Dunn tied the scores and forced a replay at St Andrews. Kingsley and the home crowd were encouraged to be loud and proud for the midweek visit of Norwich. Steve Koppel recalled his first team regulars, while Robert Earnshaw completed his move from West Brom to the Canaries at the Medeski before the match. Little. Jinking run from Little. Balance and poise. Lita's there. Leroy Lita with the header, he's frustrated, good ball in from Little on the right hand side, it stays 0-0. Lita with a flick, Doyle chasing, was he dragged back referee? Well, Gary Doherty seemed to get a decent amount of Kevin Doyle's shirt on that occasion. Was he the last man and should it be a red card? Now it's going to be a yellow. Free kick, Shorey over the ball, and Shorey scores, 1-0 to Reading. Nicky Shorey with his first goal of the season, a very neat free kick. Pombi and Harper were vying to take the free kick as well, Robert Green could do nothing about it. Doyle for Reading. Lovely overlapping run from Little. And it goes, and it's a goal. Reading have scored another one, and it was Sidwell who met it on the run. Stooping header from Sidwell. What a ball in from Glenn Little. 2 0 to Reading. Here's Doyle. Still on the ball, balance from him, in it goes and there's the third goal, Reading piling men into the six yard box, Leroy Lita got the last touch, it was all about Kevin Doyle's persistence on that Reading left hand side, whips the ball in and Lita puts it home, and Ascot gets a hug, Norwich 3-0 down, chasing the game through McVeigh, may yet be a chance for them to try and get back into it, Hanneman's there to thwart the effort. Good turn, good shot from Norwich. Reading on the hunt for four. And here comes Bobby Convey, like an express train down the left hand side. Oh, what a goal from Bobby Convey. Runs half the length of the pitch and very calmly from the top of the box, steering at home past Robert Green. 4 0 to Reading, an emphatic performance once again. Warming up for the game against Crewe. On Saturday, a terrific performance against Norwich this week. It's a post not far away. Gunnison with the header. And Norwich can clear their lines. Good ball in from Shorey. Just the tightest of touches from Green, nudging it onto the post. Running for Norwich nil, and that's how it will finish. There's the final whistle. Reading consolidating their spot. 76 points at the top of the championship. As the placards told the crowd during the game, bring it on, be loud, be proud. While the Royals finished January with a four-goal flourish, Crystal Palace were beaten by Preston. 
and Leeds drew with Ipswich. Sheffield United soon won their game in hand, but the Royals were 21 points clear of the scrap for the playoffs. It had been a hectic month with seven League and Cup matches, and the unbeaten league run was up to 30 games. For the second game running, Reading hit four goals, and there could have been more if Kevin Doyle had enjoyed some better luck. But rock bottom crew, despite losing their previous six matches, gave the Royals a run for their money and took the lead through Lee Bell after 14 minutes. But Reading were creating plenty of chances, and only the woodwork kept out Leroy Lita's volley. The equaliser arrived midway through the first half from the trusty left foot of Nicky Shorey, his second free kick goal in successive games. And just two minutes later, Glenn Little's cross was headed in by Steve Sidwell, Reading in front and in charge. Shorey almost got another, denied by a desperate save from Turnbull. But just before half-time it looked all over as a contest as Lita's sharp turn and low shot made it 3-1. But crew are nothing but fighters, and Gareth Taylor pulled the goal back six minutes into the second half. And the goals just kept coming. Bobby Convey's cross was turned in superbly by Lita, his second of the match, 4-2 to Reading. But with 20 minutes remaining, Shorey handled in the area, and Kenny Lunt gave crew renewed hope with a confident penalty. It was end-to-end -end stuff, and once again Doyle's strong running opened up the crew defence, and so close to a fifth goal. Then it was the turn of substitute Stephen Hunt to run crew ragged, but he was crudely chopped down by Lunt on the edge of the box. A straight red, and no way back for crew after that. Steve Koppel made eight changes for the FA Cup fourth round replay at Birmingham three days later and his reshaped side did well at a wet and windy St Andrews despite falling behind to a Mikhail Forsell goal on the half hour. An element of luck about the goal as Graham Stack saved well only for the rebound to fall kindly for the striker. Nothing lucky about the Reading equaliser early in the second half. Stephen Hunt latched onto John Oster's long ball and outmuscled the Blues defenders before hammering in a left foot volley. It was no more than the Royals deserved, they'd more than matched their Premiership opponents. And what a goal from Hunt, only his second of the season, but one he'll talk about for many a year. But the winner was another classy goal, and it was Yeri Yarosik who got behind the Reading defence to deliver the perfect cross for Julian Gray to head Birmingham into the fifth round. The Royals had already beaten West Brom in the previous round, but for Steve Koppel, the Premiership was his priority and the next game against Southampton. For Steve Bruce, it was just nice to get a win of any kind. We don't think we did ourselves justice last Saturday against Crewe um, and we want to put that right, but more than that we want to go and show Southampton we deserve to be where we are. Before kick-off there was a tribute to the former England manager Ron Greenwood, especially poignant for Steve Koppel who played under him at international level. Once the game got underway Reading wasted no time in taking the lead. A defensive howler from Nathan Dyer leading to a goal from Leroy Lita. He doesn't miss those and how he likes to celebrate. Full credit though to Glenn Little, yet another assist from him. Southampton had their chances to get back on level terms. Greg Orr's Rashak should have levelled it up, but somehow pulled his shot wide. And seconds later defender Alexander Oslund got forward to head against the woodwork. But within seconds, Reading were down the other end, and it was Kevin Doyle with a clinical finish to make it 2-0. It was a rare Route 1 goal, but once again Doyle's control and finish were top draw. It was party time for the crowd of almost 24,000, and the Graham Murty Appreciation Society were out in force. Not too many chances in the second half, Convey shot narrowly wide, the manager still demanding more from his players. Get out! And then from Convey's corner late on, Doyle headed on, but Steve Sidwell couldn't get a connection. Disbelief all round, 
but the points were in the bag and Steve Cobble's side had claimed the scalp of another team just down from the Premiership. And among the sellout crowd, a group of fans from County Wexford at the game to watch one player in particular. So it's the, what, the Kevin Doyle fan club, is it? And yeah. Just tell me about your, tri your trip over. Oh, we arrived straight in England today, came down to see the match, <laughs> and right time to come see Kevin Doyle score the goal. <laughs> the battle of Bramall Lane, first against second, and it was first blood to Neil Warnock's side, as Bruce Dyer found enough space in the box to slide the ball past Marcus Harneman. The blades ahead after just nine minutes. But it took Reading just two minutes to get back on level terms. Good approach work from Graham Murty. An inviting cross from Convey. And Dave Kitson claimed his 18th goal of the season. Just a response needed to quieten the crowd of over 25,000 inside Bramall Lane. It was turning into a full-blooded contest. Kitson showing he knows how to tackle as well as score. But this was a narrow escape for the Royals as the defence failed to clear and it was Murty who somehow blocked Craig Short's goal-bound shot. Into the second half and Sheffield were turning up the heat and a combination of the post and Glenn Little again kept the ball out. Then another set-piece provided a glorious chance for substitute Steve Cabot to win it late on. But Harneman stood tall and saved with his leg. Cabot just couldn't believe it. Then in the final minute, Kevin Doyle's flex set Convey on his way. The defender couldn't catch him, but Paddy Kenny saved his shot, only to bring the winger down with the ball rolling to safety. Mark Halsey had no doubt, a penalty, and it was Kitson who stepped up in front of the Reading fans, but Kenny beat his shot away, and the opportunity was gone. A breathless night in South Yorkshire, but Reading had held their closest rivals, and their proud unbeaten record now stood at 33 games. Obviously, to get a result up there was very nice, you know, to get a point even, it's away from home, and they're second in the league, so to come away with something not to get, not to get beaten was, was the most important thing. We have great respect for the, the team we play next, and certainly with Luton, we've played them twice this year already, and you know my players know they're going to be into a game. There are no easy matches in this division. Everyone says every team's capable of beating of every other, and, and we know that. You know, despite you know records and runs and what's happened previously, we know we can be beaten by anybody. And I've said it a number of times: it's that fear of being beaten that drives us on. So Reading ran out at Luton on Friday, February the 17th, and for the players and fans, it was to be a roller coaster evening. Steve Coppel had warned everyone that this was likely to be one of their toughest matches, and so it proved. But the evening started like a dream, with the Royals scoring one of the quickest goals of the season. It took Kevin Doyle just 18 seconds to get on the score sheet, as he capitalised on some slack defending. The striker's 14th goal in his incredible season, and as usual he showed his usual calm assurance when the chance came his way. With just four minutes on the clock, it could have been 2-0, as James Harper's shot flew narrowly wide. But Luton are a mean side at home, and they equalised in the 20th minute with a neat build-up, and Rowan Vine chipped the ball over the oncoming Harneman. Mike Neal's team right back in it, and there was worse to come. Just six minutes later, Luton got their second. It came again from the right flank, the Reading defence sliced open, and Kevin Foley's cross tucked in again by Vine. The Royals on the back foot and their unbeaten record seriously under threat. But five minutes before the break, a controversial moment as Doyle got away from Heikkinen. And as he broke into the box, he went down under the defender's challenge. The striker was convinced it was a penalty, but the referee was having none of it. The replay, though, seems to suggest that Doyle had a strong argument. So 2-1 down at half-time, and it got worse early in the second half, as Luton took a 3-1 lead, and it was the former Reading player Dean Morgan who rubbed salt into the wound with a fine goal. Marcus Harneman left flat-footed, the Royals were suddenly facing an uphill struggle. Still 40 minutes to go, 
But Steve Coppel's worried expression said it all. Reading did pull a goal back in injury time. Some great work by Stephen Hunt. And when the cross came in, Doyle was on the end of it. There were still two minutes left, but there was to be no dramatic equaliser. The run was over, and the manager accepted defeat with dignity. The Royals first since August the 6th, a run of 33 games. And that's a record that would take some beating. The Royals now met Preston. Billy Davis's team were unbeaten in the championship in almost five months, moving up to the playoff places. Reading coming into this game with a defeat for the first time since August, that situation, having lost to Luton a few days ago. Here's Convy with the corner, Nash comes for it and doesn't claim it. Nash should claim it this time, Sidwell's there, and has Sidwell legitimately bundled it in? I think he has. 1-0 to Reading, five minutes gone, Sidwell the goal scorer. Well, what was going on with Carlo Nash? He made the initial punch, not very decisively. Ball comes back in, let's have a close look at this. Yep, Sidwell is the man who's there. Nash scrabbling around on the ground for it, unable to get the final claim. Corner to Preston. Plenty of big men waiting in the box. Just bobbling around and Sonko is the man there who tries to clear. Up ends the Preston midfielder in the process and it's a dangerous position this. Davis the man who was upended by Sonko and Preston just two minutes after Reading have scored have an ideal opportunity to put themselves back level. Preston round the wall and home 1-1 Davidson the man who puts Preston back level after seven minutes Hanneman was struggling to get across in time well executed free kick from Davidson and Reading need to go hunting another goal if they have to take three points out of this one the training ground routine free kick the wall well organized in terms of disruption from Preston Hanneman unable to cover the ground Couple with plenty on his mind, 1-1, but lots of time to find the winner. One of the new additions to the Medeski Stadium this year, marginally more expensive than Kevin Doyle, that turbine. Long clearance downfield from the boot of Murty. Kitson gives chase, oh that's a sickening blow on Kitson from Nash. Nash out his ground and Preston will be able to get the ball away, but let's just check up on the welfare of Dave Kitson because Nash came storming out the penalty box and Nash could be in trouble while Kitson looks out Sparko and just watching this you fear for the welfare of Dave Kitson full tilt chasing after it and the lights go out on Dave Kitson's afternoon and he could well be struggling to play against Burnley next week after that one there's Leroy Lita and he'll be introduced at the expense of Kitson. Not a happy afternoon. Reading looking for that all-important second goal to put them ahead against Preston. And here comes Lita, the substitute. What can he do? Oh, a finish from Lita. It's sublime. A narrow angle. There were men waiting in the middle, but he didn't need them just puts it past Carlo Nash and puts Reading into the lead. 2-1, Leroy Lee to the substitute with the latest of the Reading goals. Fine finish. In comes the ball from the Preston right. Oh, what an opportunity. The header 
was probably going in and Murty not far away from turning it into the back of his own net horrible moment for the Reading fullback just did enough to see it wide 2-1 up Reading and looking to hold on to that lead defeat against Luton in the last week need a win here oh it's a ball over the line it was a good header from point blank range and that will be one to have a look at again because the ball appeared to creep over the line no it didn't good full back play from Osto who was on the post and gets the ball clear my goodness me Reading hanging on to their lead by a whisker quite literally Oster with the valuable defensive intercept we've got that determination grip you know throughout the team from the keep up to the strikers and when it's hard going and times like that to, to dig deep you know we can mix it as well as anyone it was a great ball by Doyle and um, I thought I just got here across the keeper and I got a chance and I did that and it went in all the strikers are scoring so yeah, that's good for the squad the Royals had 10 matches to play. Statisticians calculated they needed a maximum of 14 more points to guarantee promotion. While Reading finished fed by beating one of the playoff contenders, Sheffield United lost at home to QPR. The unbeaten run of 33 league matches up to the defeat at Luton is an all-time record for the division. Were you pleased with the way you're playing now? Uh, yeah, I'm doing all right. I was rubbish last week, but um, apart from that, I've been doing all right. Uh, obviously, you get the odd game, but you know, I, I always think of uh, I was thinking of Frank Lampard. You know, he's been playing like four seasons. I ain't seen him have a bad game. I've seen him have a quiet game, but not a bad game. That's what I want, and that's what everyone wants. So we're trying our best. Dave Kitson is a legend, by the way. Just got to get that on record. I love him. He was knocked out. I was crying. He was down on the floor. He got Carlo Nashed, and I was crying. Cool. Is he gone? We'll have a chat with him in a second. The worst jacket I've ever seen in my life. I watch, oh, sorry, sorry, lads. There you go. Lovely stuff. <laughs> Cheers, man. Um, yeah, and I know you hate to have this question asked you, but I'm going to make Not it my contract. last one. No, no, no. Good, no. Don't good, worry, don't worry. Good. <laughs> this, if you, some results go your way this weekend, next weekend, something could happen, couldn't it? No, because you don't look at it like that. It's when, when the season's over and we're up, that's it. You ask me then, and I'll, I'll happily tell you that we've done great and we were up and all that. But until then, I can't say anything like that. Are you even thinking about it though? Have you got any no. boot contracts sorted no, or anything? No, no, no. I know the car, the, no cars have been ordered, no houses have been bought, nothing, nothing. Isn't over till it's over? Yeah, exactly. Reading's victory at Burnley was overshadowed by an injury which brought Leroy Leeter's season to a premature and painful end. Leeter had headed the ball down for Bobby Convey to strike a glorious opener after just 10 minutes. Just before half-time, Lita got away a shot, but his left ankle collapsed beneath him. Physio John Fern was tending to the striker within seconds, but Lita was in agony. The £1 million signing from Bristol City had made a massive impact on Reading's season, scoring 15 times in league and cup matches. His ankle was fractured, and in the same week he'd appeared for England's under-21 team, this was a cruel end to his season. Glenn Little, who'd been struggling for full fitness, came on as a second-half substitute, and his free kick was met by Ibra Sonko for goal number two. Little, the sub, was himself replaced late on by Stephen Hunt and he played the leading role in a third goal in the final seconds. He raced down the right and set up a simple chance for Dave Kitson, who was on in place of Lita. A comfortable victory on a sad day for Leroy, the highlight had been Convey's opener. He's been a revelation this season. Uh, he's really confident, um, he's settled right in, he's got a nice place in the centre of Reading and he feels really part of the club and that tells in the way he's been playing. And he's been outstanding for us and it was a fantastic goal in a pretty, you know, an average game I would say. 
The next visitors to the Medeski were Watford. It was another sellout. The Hornets were, along with Leeds, attempting to peg back Sheffield United's position in the top two. With Leroy Lita out for the rest of the season, Dave Kitson started alongside Kevin Doyle. Shorey. Convey. Got away from Young. Kitson's there, Doyle's there, Sonko's there, hooked away. Scrambled off the line by Marky Mackay. And Watford can break with McNamee. He's got some pace, as Murty is finding out here. And he's got three in support. Good header by Harper. Still a chance for Young, deflected, corner kick. As good an attack as either side of Mounted. Reading denied on the goal line at one end. Watford denied by deflection at the other. Doyle. Oster. Tossed into Kitson, no flag here. He swung it past the keeper. The teams finished goalless. It was another step forward for Reading though. The match also saw chairman John Medeski make a special presentation to Gordon Neat. Fred, as he's known, had reached a real milestone, 50 years with the club. After his playing career had been curtailed by injury, Fred became groundsman at Elm Park. There was a tear in the eye as half a century of service was honoured. Reading couldn't achieve promotion on the afternoon Wolves visited, but they were within touching distance of the Premiership. There was another 23,000 plus crowd at the Medeski. The Royals had the better of the first half. Dave Kitson swung the ball into the Wolves area. Kevin Doyle kept the pressure on, and when the visitors fell to clear, John Oster pounced. His centre was slammed in by Bobby Convey. Glenn Hoddle's team got stronger and posed plenty of problems for the Royals' defence. Graham Murty cleared from the goal line. Convey was playing a more central role and he was the Royals' most influential player. This was the type of break the Medeski crowd had become accustomed to. After a leading role in the goal, Oster also laid on a glorious chance for Ibrasonko. In the second half, Dave Kitson charged down a clearance and the Wolves keeper had to scramble back to deny the Royals striker. Just an inch or two from an embarrassing moment for Postma, Wolves equalised when Rowan Ricketts tried to put Thomas Frankowski in and Ingemarsson's challenge fell for Kenny Miller. Wolves had beaten Reading twice in the previous season and they finished strongly this time. Marcus Harneman produced a top quality save to deny Jeremy Aliadier. It finished one apiece, some relief for the Reading players, a second successive draw. They were ever closer to promotion. March the 25th at Leicester. The Royals chairman had cut short a holiday to ensure he didn't miss this occasion. 3,000 Reading supporters were there. A victory would ensure promotion. Anything less meant results elsewhere had to fall Reading's way. Leicester had improved under Rob Kelly. The Foxes had the better of it. And Ian Hume struck the opening goal in the first half. Marcus Harneman made important saves and Joey Goodjonson rattled the woodwork. At half time it looked as though the promotion party would have to wait. But Reading dug out a result. 
five minutes from time, James Harper's corner was flicked on by Ivar Ingemarsson and Kevin Doyle was celebrating. With Watford now losing and Leeds drawing, the goal didn't affect the mathematical equation. Reading was set for promotion. Unless, of course, the outcome changed at either Elland or Vicarage Roads. There were anxious closing minutes for the travelling fans. The Royals had drawn a third successive game. On the final whistle, the supporters and the players were still awaiting the outcome at Leeds. They sang in hope. The celebrations had to wait until the stadium announcer confirmed Leeds had drawn with Stoke. After 135 years, Reading Football Club had made it to the top flight of English football. They would be playing in the Premiership from August 2006. I still can't believe it. You know, I mean, you know, we've been doing so well this year. We're, you know, we had a great points lead, but to finally be there, it's just amazing. It's a magic moment. It really is a magic moment for Reading Football Club, for the chairman, for myself, for all the players, and more importantly for all those people they've waited a long time for this so I hope they have a great night tonight oh, I wish I could do that <laughs> and then I'd be well pleased you know, I'm, I am chuffed I am really chuffed at the moment I am chuffed and I can't say any more than that I came here a few years ago with, with Brighton and Leicester got promoted on that day, so for me personally, it's quite fitted that we did it here, I suppose. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It's absolutely unbelievable. You know, we're. We've played some fantastic football this, this year. We didn't play it today, but we dug a result out, and, uh, and this is what it means to everyone. We're going to be playing in the Premier League next year. It's fantastic. It's been my honour to lead this team. Team of absolute champions from 1 to 11, and uh, I can't praise them highly enough. They deserve everything they're going to get. Yeah, every player wants to play at the highest level they can and that's the Premiership. For me, the Premiership is the best league in the world and it's, it's going to be great to, to grace the fields there next year. When you were playing in the League of Ireland just over a year ago, did you think you'd be heading for the Premiership so quickly? Um, no, you know, uh, dreamland really. I couldn't have imagined it um, in, my, in my wildest dreams, I suppose. Um, come to Reading to, to be playing and then to be uh, having an unbelievable season where we're so many points clear to get promotion with, with five, six games to go. It's just it's unreal. better than this this one <laughs> they have every right to enjoy this moment don't they absolutely yeah it's taken 16 years and it's all those wonderful fans and it's all the wonderful fans it's all the people in the background there they are look 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 So you say 16 years work, not just one season's work? 
16 years works, building brick on brick. We've got a great squad, we've got a great team, we've got um, a great manager, fantastic backroom people, fantastic fans. Everybody has been part of this and this is a cul culmination of a lot of hard work. So Reading were promoted to the Premiership before the end of March. They had a 20-point advantage over Watford, who were beaten at home by Millwall, and over Leeds, who drew with Stoke. With six points from four matches, March was Reading's least productive month, but the prize was everything they wanted. It had been a special, unforgettable day in the club's long history. Some of the people have texted and left messages on the, uh, on the phone. Um, and, you know, to times like this, you realise what you have done. You know, and to have done it so early in the season, it's uh, a great compliment to, to to everybody at the club because no one would have imagined that we'd have been in this position. For months, the manager remained the coolest operator in the Championship. Now he could celebrate, and he had emptied his jacket pockets. I checked everything, I always do, I've you know, actually done it before at Palace, uh, throw, throwing something in there, you know, with the players throwing bits of kit, you know, it's, that's my bit of kit I suppose. The kit man wasn't too happy but he let me do it. We was all surprised as well when he jumped in the crowd and threw his jacket, oh, it's great, you know, especially when uh, you know, the gaffer's getting emotional, you, you know, it's a special, special thing. After a couple of days rest, the players went back to work. Well, I've, we've had the, obviously Sunday and Monday off, so we've just been relaxing at home uh, with the family and friends. And um, yeah, it's been pretty low, like low key, really. <laughs> we've got every day in training. Look at these. <laughs> Before the next home match, chairman John Medeski saluted the supporters. His club were promoted. The next target was to secure the championship. Reading had to beat Derby and Sheffield United had to drop points at Stoke. Glenn Little returned to the starting lineup. Sonko with the tidying up at the back. High into the sky. Alert air traffic control about that one. Up to Little. Little on the gallop down the right hand side as he has done so many times this season. That's a good ball in. Kitson can't get the contact. On the back post though. The midfielder running in. Convy with the strike. It was a crisp strike as well. Derby trying to get it under control, here's Sidwell, into the feet of Kitson, Sidwell goes for the follow-up and it's over the bar, which is a shame for Reading, because that was good build-up play. Kitson and Sidwell combining neatly, and good passing, good movement off the ball as well from Sidwell, will be disappointed with the finish. Harper again, pulling the strings in midfield, into the sunshine, play with Kitson, here's a chance for Harper, scores! Harper could have just written Reading into the history books. We've got news coming through that Sheffield United are trailing Stoke at the Britannia and with Reading being 1-0 up against Derby, as things stand, the championship title is destined for the Medeski Stadium and those fans, don't they just know that? A little back heel from Kitson. And Harper needing no second invitation. There's the reaction on the bench. Steve Koppel taking it all in his stride as he has done all season. Those gentlemen on the other hand a little more carried away. Reading with their 22nd clean sheet so far. They'll be looking to uh, try and hold on to that and indeed try and extend their run. Just the one goal to Reading so far, but that's a good ball from Convy to Doyle. And Doyle makes it two. Two goals in quick succession, just four minutes dividing the Harper and Doyle goals. 
and even the chairman getting involved in the dancing. Doyle wasn't going to miss from there. Substitution, a man who supplied the last goal, Bobby Convey, is going to be removed and Stephen Hunt comes on and John Oster, yet to score his first goal in a league game for Reading, will be introduced at the expense of Glenn Little, many people's candidate for player of the season. Another good game for him on the right midfield. Has he done enough to secure the championship title? Shorey with the free kick. Substitute Hunt. A little bit of showboating from him. Skips around the defender. Moore can't deal with it. Back to Doyle. This time Moore deals with it a little bit better. More showboating from Hunt. Bouncing dangerously. Doyle's there. So is Oster. And Oster makes it 3 0. That surely has sealed the three points for Reading. Oster becomes the 14th Reading player to score in league football this season. That's a decent reflection on how many squad members have contributed to Reading's championship title effort. Could be a little bit early to be saying that because we await the result from the Britannia Stadium, but it looks like Reading will beat Derby this afternoon. Steve Koppel, the mastermind behind the Reading performance, going to introduce another substitute. Shane Long scored some valuable goals for Reading this season, not least against Derby at Pride Park to grab a 2-2 draw on New Year's Eve. I wonder if he can go on and add to his goal-scoring tally this season. Inga Marson. Towards Long. Bounces for Kitson. Here come Reading once again. The captain, Murty, the prize of shoot because he hasn't got on the score sheet yet this season. Good ball in for Murty and Long's there to make it four. Well, Steve Koppel will be celebrating that decision. The substitution made and an immediate impact by Shane Long. He makes it 4-0. Terrific ball in from the captain. Long on the near post. Tucks it past Camp. 4-0. Isn't that man happy? through that Sheffield United have drawn back level with Stoke. The Mexican waves in Medeski Stadium. Those fans may not be quite so happy if they knew that uh, Sheffield United are in with a chance of damaging Reading's chances of wrapping up the title this afternoon. Sheffield United mustn't lose. Reading surely destined to win. Can Long wrap it all up. Here's Oster. Hits the post. Well worked by Reading again through the midfield. Kevin Dillon wonders how that doesn't hit the back of the net. 4-0 to Reading and uh, potentially just a few minutes away from the biggest win in their history. Already guaranteed of Premiership football this season. Can they wrap up the title this afternoon? Derby County bundled off the ball by Sidwell. There's Oster. Hunt out to Long, Long on the angle, and Long finishes in style, runs over to lap up the reception of the crowd, Shane Long, two goals this afternoon, seven minutes remaining in the contest, and Long, very relaxed, slots it into the corner, more jubilant scenes in the Reading technical area, they think the title is theirs. Still 1-1 at the Britannia Stadium, 5-0 to Reading here against Derby County. And it's been an emphatic second half performance, all the goals coming in the second half. There's the final whistle and Reading players aren't entirely sure what the situation is because of course they don't know what the score is at the Britannia Stadium. We know that the score here is 5-0 to Reading, a terrific display from the strikers. Goals from Harper, Doyle, Oster and Long with two. Steve Koppel shakes a hand of his opposite number. There's still a little bit of mystery surrounding the outcome of the afternoon. Is a title Reddings? Well, the fans are flooding onto the pitch. And there's the announcement. 
It's the announcement Reading have been waiting for for 135 years. Champions 2005 stroke six. Sheffield United drew one all at Stoke, so the Royals' 5-0 demolition of the Rams put the championship out of reach of their rivals. These were moments to be treasured by the club's supporters, the staff, the management and the players. I know, it's amazing, you know, look, just look at them fans out there, it means the world to them and uh, it's just great that we could do it today in, in front of them. We wanted to win it as soon as possible. We want to do it at home. That was the main thing, because we wanted this. This is this is awesome. I mean, the crowd, you know, have been so behind us, especially after Christmas. You know, everybody started coming. All the half-season tickets and the place has been packed since then. It's been it's been just unbelievable. supporters could look up and see you know the pleasure the players had in achieving their season long goal and it was just it's a special link it's a special moment and you know the chairman's a very wealthy man but I'm sure he'll remember that above anything else um, you know we had some young players today Shane came on and obviously made a massive impact uh, I'm sure Again, in 20, 30 years' time, the one thing that will really stick in his mind is a moment today. So, you know, tremendous for everybody at the club. It's, it's a proud day to be a, anybody associated with Reading. Excellent, and well done to you. Cheers, thank you very much. I couldn't have dreamt of it going any better now, just coming on and getting the two goals was, was a brilliant feeling now. It's just some days they go your way and some days they don't, and luckily today was my day. It was good to be in front of 3,000 last week. To do it in front of 24,500 this week takes it to a whole new level. very special indeed they don't come along very often in a lifetime and this one was just so poignant because it'll never ever happen again because this is you know a once in a lifetime ambition of getting Reading into the the top flight of football into the premiership now we may in years to come be relegated we may get back into the premiership but it'll never be as special as this occasion when we got into the premiership for the very first time so I'm absolutely over the moon to be associated with that and I'm absolutely delighted for everybody and all the people whose contribution have been made to make this day possible so it doesn't get any better than this. There were still five matches to play. Back on the training ground at Arborfield, an air of celebration. It must be shocking. <laughs> For this squad, motivation was not an issue. Though the next opponents, Cardiff, were not alone in being in the firing line. I don't, you don't never want to lose, you never want to... You know, it's just the love of the game. You don't want to be a loser. You don't want to, you know, winning's a habit and you want a habit. We're going to go to, into every game. Um, we still owe it to the fans to, to perform on a Saturday. They're, they're paying the money and uh, they want to see a good performance. And um, you wouldn't be a professional if you didn't do that, really. Back at the start of the year, Reading put five goals past Cardiff and they did it again at Ninian Park. Darren Purse had a game he'll want to forget in a hurry. As early as the 10th minute he was robbed by Dave Kitson and from Bobby Convey's cross, James Harper swept in the opening goal. His sixth of the season 
and the perfect start for the travelling fans. Six minutes before the break, Nicky Shorey's cross fell kindly for Kitson and the striker claimed his 20th goal of the season. It was all too easy. Kitson was causing havoc in the jittery Cardiff defence and early in the second half he latched onto Convey's cross and desperate defending from Leuvens saw the defender head into his own net. 3-0 to Reading, game over surely. To their credit though, Cardiff staged a late rally. Shorey's clearance was charged down by Jason Kumas and his deep cross was bundled in by Cameron Jerome. Cardiff went for broke and with 10 minutes left the nerves started to jangle as they made it 3-2. Kumas's corner headed in by the substitute Paul Parry. But with four minutes remaining, Purse was again at fault as he miskicked a clearance and how he was punished. Substitute Stephen Hunt whipped in a telling cross and Kevin Doyle's header made the game safe. 18 goals now for the striker. Cardiff were a demoralised side by then and there was no mercy from the Royals as they poured forward again. And in injury time, Harper thumped in his second goal. Another five-goal route following on from the thrashing of Derby the previous week. It doesn't get much better than this. Leeds needed a win to keep alive their hopes of finishing as runners-up to Reading and joining them in the Premiership. And they got the breakthrough they needed two minutes into the second half. Rob Hulse, the scorer, after a well-worked move had opened up the Royals' defence. Sean Derry providing the cutback and Hulse the quickest to react. But once again, Steve Koppel's substitutes conjured up the equaliser five minutes from time. Brynjar Gunnarsson had only been on two minutes when his precise cross was headed back across goal by Eva Ingemarsson and Stephen Hunt turned it past Sullivan. He'd come on 20 minutes earlier and once again had come up trumps with another vital goal, his third of the season. A hard-earned point for Koppel's men, Kevin Blackwell's side having to settle for the playoffs. Another milestone as Reading moved past the 100 point mark for the season. Steve Sidwell heading them in front midway through the first half. Steve Koppel had made six changes to his starting lineup, but the new faces settled in well and the Royals were always in control. Kevin Doyle earned himself a penalty early in the second half when he was wrestled to the ground by Stoke defender Carl Hopkins. And it was Doyle who picked himself up to beat Simonson with a spot kick. But four minutes later, Stoke pulled a goal back when Eva Ingemarsson diverted Gallagher's cross onto a post and Adam Rooney was on hand to knock in the rebound. A glimmer of hope for the Potters, but ironically it was one of their old boys who snuffed it out just three minutes later. Stephen Hunt and Nicky Shorey swapped passes and Hunt's cross was inch perfect as John Halls arrived at the far post. His first goal for the club in only his third appearance. It's been an absolutely fantastic season for, for Reading. The boys have been unbelievable. I mean, I've only been here since January, but uh, just seeing the way the club's run and everything, you know, they deserve it. It's nothing, nothing less than they deserve. And uh, just to be involved near the end, uh, it's just brilliant, you know. So it's really, I'm really enjoying it. For Leroy Lita, a frustrating end to the season. He missed the last nine games after breaking his ankle in the game against Burnley. We're almost on half time here. There's one minute to add on, and this could be dangerous. It's just, um, you know, just one of them free things that happen in football. Just had a shot, I shoot from that position lo uh, lots of times, and, um, you know, broke my ankle. Uh, I'm just I was concerned that uh, when he injured it against Burnley, that there was a weakness in the bone as a result of that ongoing problem throughout the season. But after six weeks on crutches, he's on his way back. He's got two screws in the ankle now. That will be left in for the entire season next year and be taken out at the end of next season. Um, and we will just review the situation as we go along. The pre-season, the pitches are harder, the training is more intense. So it couldn't be worse time for him, really. But then again, we'll be looking after him over the summer, making sure his fitness is enough. But we may have to tweak around with the training sessions in July to see how much he does do and how much he gets involved. 
With Sheffield Wednesday having beaten off the threat of relegation the previous week, there was a carnival atmosphere among the crowd of over 27,000 at Hillsborough. But it was first blood to the Royals, as Kevin Doyle and John Oster set up Dave Kitson for his 21st goal. 1-0 up at the break, and Reading seemingly cruising. And just two minutes into the second half, Kitson had the ball in the net again from Steve Sibwell's cross, but it was rolled out for a marginal offside. But Paul Sturrock's side then upped the pace, and the Royals' defence was opened up by Frankie Simic's surging run, which was halted unfairly by Bobby Convey. Not too many complaints about the penalty. The spot kick was coolly dispatched by Steve McLean, one all, and the home side then went for the kill. In the closing minutes, it took some stout defending by Reading to stay on level terms. Marcus Harneman pulled off a great double save, as Wednesday looked to give their fans a winning send-off. And then in injury time, Dion Burton's header was cleared off the line by Oster, as Reading clung on to the point. Before the final game, Kevin Doyle was named as the supporters' player of the season. In his first full season since arriving from Cork City, the 23-year-old had won a full international cap for the Republic of Ireland and had also been named as the championship's player of the season. The final match, a fitting occasion for the players' sons and daughters, even nieces and nephews, to be the team's mascots. The last day crowd raised the hoops, striving to lift the team to a record points tally and perhaps 100 league goals for the season if they could score three times against Queen's Park Rangers. The first came from a swift first half break. Marcus Harneman sent his countryman Bobby Convey away on the left. Nicky Shorey again linked up with Convey and when the Americans deep centre finally arrived it was superbly cut back by John Oster for Dave Kitson to make it 22 for the season. The Royals were on their way with another counter-attacking goal. Rangers were stubborn opponents competing to spoil the Medeski's party. The visitors equalised with 18 minutes remaining through Paul Furlong, and they deserved to be level. Time was running out on the Royals' hopes of reaching the milestone of 100 league goals. Stephen Hunt's bicycle kick went close to bringing a spectacular second. From the resulting corner, Nicky Shorey took on Rangers' Richard Langley and his attempt to centre was blocked by Langley's hand. The visitors contested the decision and tried to unnerve the Royals' penalty taker. Graham Murty was the only regular outfield player not to have scored in this amazing season. He'd been waiting for this moment. The Medeski crowd held its breath. Murty had realised his goal. Kingsley was about to take a celebratory pounding. The skipper's first was Reading's 99th and final league goal of the season. Victory lifted the club to 106 points, eclipsing Sunderland's 105 set seven seasons earlier. After the final whistle, John Medeski led the celebrations. His club had set new standards for the championship. The manager, Steve Koppel, was the first to receive his championship medal. Graham Murty was the last of the Royals players to stride to the podium. 
to take possession of the Coca-Cola Championship Trophy. It was time for another celebration and the players set off on their lap of honour. You know when you think of all the work that's gone into it, you know, it's a real good feeling. It would have been a bit of a damn squib if we'd have not won the game, so uh, thank you to Graham Mercy who under intense pressure delivered the goods. He's been practising his penalties, he was hit them well yesterday, but uh, to do it here in front of the big crowd with so much on it, uh, credit to him. holding him, him in my hands and with this round his neck it's, it's fantastic what a, what a day what a day you know we've got a whole bunch of different guys on our team everybody from all different countries and you know different personalities but we've come together for the common goal and, and the, the manner in which we've won this league has been ridiculous and that's why we got the points lead If that boy's going to kick one in, I'd be still running now, but Graham Murphy was like Tony Adams three years ago, and would you believe it? So, oh, just get on with it, just get on with it. We've broken the record, the best team that's ever been in this division, so we can't believe it, but take on the next season and try and compete in the Premiership. Once in a lifetime, make the most of it, it's really fantastic. Enjoying, savouring the moment. What were your thoughts when that penalty was awarded? Oh, well I knew there was only one person who was going to take it, I knew there was only one person who was going to score. <laughs> Brilliant, absolutely. At last, a goal! The good one, isn't it? Uh, there was a few people who tried to get in on it, I pulled rank, and uh, you've, you've never known a sweeter feeling than that when it went in. You know, 106 points is just incredible, absolutely incredible, and uh, I think it'll be a long time standing. Of any team that I've ever worked with, you know, they deserve their success as much as more than any other one I've been with because, you know, they knew that after the disappointment of last year, the, the kick off this season was going to be important and we lost the first game. So then to kick on again after that's been brilliant. And, and the, after we got beat at Luton, after like the 33 games, we made a promise in the dressing room that we go all the season again without getting beat. And that run from Luton onwards for me has been an even bigger achievement than the previous one because you know they got kicked and they got they got kicked that day. And uh, you know they came back and they finished as strong as we started. So you know they're terrific bunch to work with. So the Royals finished the season on 106 points, a new divisional record. The champions finished 16 points clear of Sheffield United, while Watford, Preston, Leeds and Crystal Palace headed for the playoffs. The May Day Bank holiday saw the Thames Valley turn out to salute the Royals. 
the players and the management took the championship trophy on a tour of the town. Tens of thousands lined the streets to pay tribute to Steve Koppel and his squad. The scenes reflected the pride of the town, though everyone was surprised by the vast numbers on the streets. And the fans have come out in force today and, and we weren't quite expecting this many, but it's been unbelievable. You can see what it means to be where everyone's decked out in uh, in blue and white stripes, it's absolutely fantastic. It's a bit special, not just for the players, but obviously more importantly for the supporters as well. It was a record-breaking season for the Royals. 31 league victories, a club record. Only 32 goals conceded, a club record. The points total of 106 is a record for the second tier of English football. The Royals had stayed at the top of the championship for five months, from November the 22nd to the end of the season. We've seen 111 Reading goals in League and Cup matches this season, and we all have our own goal of the season. Favourite goal? I gotta say Blakey. The Blakey away goal against uh, wasn't it, uh, Plymouth, wasn't it? When he chipped it. Unbelievable. But, but don't tell him. My favourite one has got to be um, the second one against West Brom because i just come back from injury and it's been, it was frustrating watching the lads and I came back and I really enjoyed that one and that's the one I'll talk about. My favourite goal would have been Leroy's overhead kick. <laughs> Very nice. None of your own? All mine are rubbish, all tappings. <laughs> oh, I think Leroy Lita against, uh, against, uh, Q, uh, sorry, against Palace, you know, that was just amazing. You know? That was one of the goals of the season for me. Uh, it's got to be big noises. Glenn Little, what a fantastic goal at Plymouth, you know. I scored a few like that in my time, but I think Ace was a little bit better.